medical purposes, I'm going to take God and say he doesn't exist. I'm going to say my best friend doesn't exist for a second, right? So therefore, everything that has to do with God also does not exist. Jesus Christ being the Messiah, that don't exist. The holy book, the Bible, and the moral law that's stated in it, none of that exists. None of that is real. So really, we also have to take the U.S. Constitution and put it over there too, because the founders of the Constitution, what did they do? They formed the Constitution on the foundation of the holy book, the Bible, our very country. That's why on money it says, in God we trust. China, you need help. We present to you a Rome Productions. What's good everybody? If you're a first time viewing my content of this video, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be dealing with a critical analysis upon the basis of a couple of concepts made by China and McLean. Alright, this is the woman from Disney. Y'all may know her from Ant Farm. Some of y'all may even know her from Tyler Perry House of Pain. That's how I got to know her growing up, seeing her on Tyler Perry's House of Pain. And then she went on to being on Ant Farm and so on and so forth. Now, she has recently given her life to Christ. She is now really fully dedicated to God, as she claims on TikTok. And she makes these videos here and there on TikTok and on Instagram on the basis of God and Christianity. So, we're gonna watch this one clip, right? We're gonna watch this one clip. <laughs> And you saw a little bit, saw just a little, just a little snippet in the beginning. But we're gonna, we're gonna watch at least one minute of this video. So let's get into the video. Our very country. That's why on money it says in God we trust. That's why we say one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. That's why in court, when you're about to testify, they put you under oath. They say, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? And whenever anybody says, I do, they are acknowledging the fact that whether they believe it or not, God is watching them and what they say in the next moments that they testify. So if we take all of that away, put it over there and say it doesn't exist, God is just a myth. What real reason do we have to be moral? Because really moral doesn't, doesn't really exist, not objective morality. What we're left with is really the socially acceptable and the socially unacceptable. Because evolution has brought us to the place to where it's socially unacceptable to kill somebody or to rape someone or to abuse little children. That's just socially unacceptable, but there's really no transcendent immorality to it. Now China. Now you know god dang well. Matter of fact, she probably don't even know god dang well. Because from the looks of it, this is something that is generally said in the church that if there was no God, if there wasn't a concept of Christianity or God or the Bible, then people would go berserk. But here's the ironic part. If you look historically, the people who were the most chaotic throughout history were people who had the Bible and a concept of God. To, the, to, to such an extent where if you didn't conform or convert to how they saw life, to how they saw God, to their Bible, to their ways of living in the church, then they would burn down your cities. They would take your kids, take the wives. They would kill masses of people, destroy civilizations, all because you didn't convert to their religion. These are Christians. Mind you, let's say that there is, and there is, let's say that there is objective reality and that there is a significant being or supreme consciousness, as I will call it, or absolute force that is responsible for that. It didn't come from your God. That's for sure. <laughs> if, you, if you look throughout the Old Testament from beginning to end, you have God doing all types of stuff for his own advantage and for his purpose and for his will. And, and when you question his ways, he'll say, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. I work in mysterious ways. And this is the concept of the deity that you see in the Bible. The Jewish deity is a, is, he's a trickster God. I made a video about this. I have that video linked in the description box below. He's a trickster deity. I'm not going to get into the whole scenario and basis of who Yahweh is, but he is a trickster God. Like I said, I made a video about it. You can see it in the description box below. I'm talking about the same deity that regretted making humanity because his own sons decided to impregnate humanity and decided to improve humanity, teaching them how to build stuff, how to wield armor, and how to study the stars. We're talking about this particular deity that decided to flood the whole earth for 40 days and 40 nights and start over again. And then looks at all the destruction he made and was like, huh, maybe, maybe I didn't really 
would know what I was thinking here. So he puts a rainbow, signify the covenant that he makes with earth and with humanity that I will no longer and will never again do something destructive like this. It'll just be fire next time. No more water or fire next time. We're talking about the same God that freed the Israelites by killing off the Egyptians, making them go through all type of famine and stuff like that at the hands of Pharaoh. And mind you, when Pharaoh didn't want to let the Israelites go, he decided, I'm going to just harden his heart even more so that I have a reason to bring destruction on Egypt. Then he brings the Israelites into the wilderness for 40 years putting them through hell. Then he was about to kill all them off. and was like, you know what? I did all this for them and this is how they repay me. Even Moses was bugging. Like Moses was like, yo, you, you do realize if you do this, the Egyptians are even going to say that you treated them better than how you're treating your own people. And then God was like, yeah, you, you, you right. You right. I ain't going to front. You right. Tells you in the Bible that God repented of his ways. This is the same God that when they get to the promised land, they have to kill the people that are on their land. Yeah, I promised you land to your forefathers, but there's some people on it. So I'm going to need you to kill the men, the women, the children, and take the young women for yourself if you desire them. We're talking about the same God that whether you didn't live according to his purpose, that he will put you in captivity to other nations of people over and over and over and over again to such a point where Gideon even had to ask one of the angels what's up what's going on what's up what's up? this man put Job through hell killed off his whole family to tempt him this man told Abraham to kill off his son to tempt him I, I don't this man told Moses to go to Egypt and let my people go. And on the way back, he, he, he attempts to kill Moses. What? I, I know you, we... You're God. And we do know that there is some form of objective morality, a moral compass, as we call it, within us. We do understand that this didn't come from your God. Now, dealing with morality, you also have being sinners, right? And sinning and doing whatever isn't good in his eyesight. Now, I saw a video also where she talks about how a lot of people talk about how you don't want to do this because you don't want to go to hell. Does anybody else feel like we'd be talking about hell so much and fear in hell that we don't talk about how much God loves us enough? On social media, I'll be looking and I'll be seeing people talking about, hey, don't do that or you're going to go to hell. Or like, you don't want to go to hell, so you know what I'm saying? Like, that's going to send you to hell. Do this so that you don't go to hell. I'm like, damn. I don't stay away from things that I shouldn't be indulging in, some things that I used to indulge in. I don't stay away from those things because I fear hell. I stay away from them because I love God. That's why I don't do things that I know are going to hurt God. I don't do them because I don't want to hurt him because I love him. Here's the thing, China. For you to say that if you don't spread the gospel, if you don't forewarn people about what is to happen or what is to come if they don't accept your God. I may have different sets of beliefs. I may have a different lifestyle. I may see the world differently than you do, but you're going to forewarn me that the way that I'm living is wrong because it's not in relation. It's not in connection. It's not pleasing to your God. Mind you, she constantly talks about, about how much she loves God and that we shouldn't want to sin because we don't want to go to hell, but we shouldn't sin because we love God. We love God. He's our best friend. We don't want to hurt him. We don't stop the cap. Okay, because we know God damn well. We know God damn well that you're not sinning and you're not living the way that you want to live because you don't want to go to hell. I just saw a video where she was talking about how the whole snake in the yard analogy Let's watch it. In the yard analogy, okay? Ooh, I leave you in the room painting. I take my dog downstairs and I unlock the door. I'm like, come on, Cujo. And right when I'm walking out, what do I see? I see a snake in the yard. So I grab my dog, rush back inside, close, lock the door. And then I go back upstairs to my room where I left you. 
I see that you've gotten up and you're about to leave the room. And I'm like, wait, where are you going? And you're like, oh, I just, I want to go to the backyard too, get some fresh air from these paint fumes. And I said, okay. I'll see you when you get back. So you go downstairs, you open the door, you head out there to get some fresh air and oh, a snake bites you. So you throw it off of you and you run back in the house and you close the door and you lock it, you run back upstairs to my room and you starting to limp at this point, your leg is hurting. And you're like, China, China, I just got bit. There's a snake in the yard. And I say, oh yeah, I know. I saw it when I was going to take my dog out. What would your next statement be? China, why didn't you tell me? You saw me heading in that direction. I told you I was going in the backyard. Why didn't you tell me there was a snake back there? And I said, I don't know. I, I wasn't trying to force what I knew on you. So I just thought that you should learn for yourself as we all should, you know, because I love you. So I was trying to give you that freedom. Does that make any sense? You wouldn't think that I actually loved you if I knew there was a snake in the yard. You told me, oh, I'm about to go to the backyard. And I just let you wander on back there without warning you of the danger. Now, if you told me, oh, I'm going to the backyard to get some air. And I said, oh, no, 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 don't go back there. I just saw a snake back there. Would giving you that information be forcing something down your throat? Forcing my beliefs on you? No, it's showing you that I love you and I care about what happens to you. So this analogy is to reference to spreading the gospel and that if she doesn't forewarn you about how the kingdom is at hand and how Jesus saved your life and die for you all this type of stuff that you're going to get bitten by the snake which is in correlation to going to hell how are you going to try and inform them and convert them with how much god loves you but he loves you enough so that you can be safe from what he can do to you if you don't accept him so in conclusion i don't know where she's trying to get at <laughs> We'll see where this goes in the next couple of years. I don't know if she's just going to be on this stairway path. She might become a minute. I, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds for Miss China Ann McLean. She is a very beautiful, beautiful, fine, fine woman. All right. Don't get it misconstrued. It. But this mindset, I, I can't rock with this. All right. But let me know in the comment section below how you feel about China Ann McLean's new way of belief and new way of living um share your thoughts below also concerning the concepts that we mentioned in this video as well do you agree with me do you not agree with me do you want to contribute to some arguments that i haven't mentioned that could maybe support china and mclean maybe not i don't know let me know in the comment section below until next time on tyrone again thank you for watching this video like this video subscribe to my youtube channel and share the video with other people until next time on tyrone and i um how you know I will provide the shit for you. You know I will provide the shit for you. You know I will provide the shit shit for you. You know I will provide the look like Papa got a brand new bag. Any man who mad, tell him, ooh, fuck it, fam, too bad. Known to spit with the coldest with no particular motive. I've grown a bit, so I've noticed what phony bitches are bogus. I bring doom to any MF. I'm a mad villain. I son niggas, my songs give you a dad feeling. The groovy new emperor, known to move temperatures. Life's a bitch, but she keeps sending me nude pics of her. She let it all hang out without shame. Through stories of each previous spouse about fame. Trying to remove a skirt made of doubt and clout games, then pin a Traitor until her mouth spit out change Nevertheless, they can't measure my fresh No rest till the devil is stressed Tell him I'm blessed I'm smiling, staring down a barrel of fear Any competitor